a review of this older laptop here in 2012 is that I bought this off of geeks.com. So um, this is a so-called refurbished laptop. And the amazing thing about this is usually when you get something that's refurbished, it's not always new looking. But I'll tell you, uh, whatever they did to refurbish this, they did a great job because this thing looks brand new. Um, I've only bought a couple of things from geeks.com in the past, but um, I think after buying this MacBook from them that I can highly recommend their uh, stuff. In fact, uh, as I'm thinking about it, I also bought an iMac from them, an Intel-based uh, iMac for the office, So, um, and it's still doing well. So anyway, let's uh, let's take a quick review of this, uh, or overview of this. I'm not going to really review it because, well, I'll tell you in a minute. You've got on this side a uh, the, the Kensington lock, or whatever they call that, a USB port, Firewire, your uh, Ethernet and DVI port. On the back, you have this lovely vent system that apparently doesn't work very well. You've got the... Uh, the mag uh, power connector here you've got another USB port you've got your audio ins and outs and then you've got this uh, other interface port here and I forgot what they call that so uh, it's an expansion port um, I don't know was it uh, PCI plus or PCI small or something like that um, not necessarily an expert on that uh, on the front here, you have your infrared port for a remote, and you have your latch release and your super drive uh, slot loading CD and DVD drive here on the front. And of course, on the top, you have your illuminated Mac logo or Apple logo. Let's see if I can get this open here. We'll take a look on the inside. Uh, my reason for wanting to buy an older MacBook was several reasons. Uh, one, I like their hardware. I like the way uh, the design of these products uh, look. Um, I like the touchpad. Um, I like the illuminated backlit keyboard. And uh, the fact that it has a camera built in as well as a microphone. And we're going to go ahead and power it up. Oh, one thing I didn't show you, speaking of power, is on the bottom here you have the battery. And you can press this button here and it will indicate the charged level of that battery. Alright, so here we go again here with one hand. Attempting to open this up again. And we're going to go ahead and power it up so you can see what happens. The one uh, modification that I have made to this uh, MacBook Pro is I have replaced the hard drive with a Intel solid state hard drive. It's a 40 gigabyte model. And the other thing I have modified is I've completely removed the Mac operating system and I have put Windows XP on this laptop. And you say, well, gee, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of having an Apple, doesn't it? Well, if you're an Apple person, then yes, it does. But if you're a Windows person like me, then it hasn't defeated anything. It's actually enhanced it, in my case. Um, so you can see here, it boots up really quickly with the uh, solid-state hard drive. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put in my password. All right, so there is my desktop, and it's telling me here that I've made some modifications to the startup utility. Um, and here you go. Now you can sort of see the uh, illuminated backlit keyboard. Here, I'll turn my camera light off so you can kind of see a little bit better. So you can see that the, uh, the keys are backlit. That is a feature that is very difficult to get on a non-Apple branded laptop unless you go with something really high-end like a like an Alienware laptop or 
uh, some of the higher end, um, you know, business class laptops. So that was another reason. I really like sitting in my dimly lit living room and uh, being able to see the keys uh, late at night. But uh, some of you may have also uh, noticed, or if you've, if you've bought one of these before and used it, is that these units tend to run really hot or are really warm. One of the things that I did to this unit to help that, and uh, you can usually feel it, the heat on this, this, uh, this top bezel here, uh, one of the things I did was I took the unit apart, and while I had it open and was replacing the hard drive, which is in this area here, uh, there are two fans that are underneath this keyboard. Uh, once you remove the top cover, uh, there's one over here and there's one over here. And both of them blow air out towards the back through that vent that we saw earlier. And one of the things I noticed is that the tape that bridges the fan to the vents on the outside was like rotted. I mean, just dry and had no stickiness at all. And I removed the tape that was on both sides and I put electrical tape in its place. Um, I also took the fans out of the unit and blew them out with uh, canned air. I think just doing those two things have helped this unit uh, run cooler. Not considerably cooler, but definitely noticeably cooler. Uh, when I first got it home and took it out of the box and turned it on, it was really, really hot. I mean, to the point where, yeah, you could put your fingers up here, but you didn't want to leave them there very long. It was just not comfortable. Uh, now it runs hot and, you know, it's considerably warm after it's been running for a while, but not to the point where uh, it's, it's uncomfortable. So, um, not sure what the temperature difference is by making that modification, but uh, it definitely helped. So um, the w most wonderful thing about uh, being a Windows guy and wanting to run Windows on a Mac is that Apple makes it super easy for you. Literally, if you bought one of these used, got it home, you would take your Windows install disk, you put it in, turn it on, boot to the disk, install Windows, and then take your Mac install disk, which this one didn't come with. I actually had to use a, a Mac install disk that, uh, for an upgrade that I had purchased. But you literally put the disk in, it goes through and installs all the drivers that you need to make Windows work. And you don't have to get rid of Mac OS X. You can have a dual boot with Windows and Mac, but I chose to just have Windows just due to the small size of this SSD hard drive that I've put into it. So, uh, so far, it's, uh, it's been great. Um, like I said, that's the only thing that I can complain about is the heat from the unit. Um, one of the things I like about Windows XP is if you want to access your webcam, I mean, you can literally just uh, double click it and it comes on up there. So there's an image of my living area here. Um, so that works really well, and you can see that there's a little green light up there at the top that is indicating that the, uh, that the camera is in use. So like I said, it's, you know, if somebody decides to hack your, uh, your webcam, you'll know it because the little green light will be on. Okay, so just a little safety measure there. Um, as far as setup goes, uh, I have put on here, um, Symantec endpoint protection because I have a corporate license where I work. So uh, I also have a group license for Windows XP, so that makes my XP installation legal. Um, I prefer Opera as my web browser, although there's a couple of websites I've run into that don't like Opera. But uh, the sound quality of this laptop is great. It's got plenty of volume, which I've ran Windows XP on a newer Mac Book Pro that we have at the office, one of the newer ones that have the black finish, uh, the unibody construction, um, and I noticed that the volume is really low. I mean, it's it's almost to the point where you can't really hear it unless you pull again a uh, external set of speakers. So um, very very helpful to uh, to know if you're an audio person and, and want to be able to to jam on some tunes, you know. 
So uh, this model was three ninety nine. That was uh, that was the price tag. I think since I've purchased this, the uh, the price, if they're even still available at Geeks.com, went up to like four twenty nine. So that must have just been a uh, a uh, get you uh, to buy quick purchase price. But um, anyway, the uh, the other cool thing. Let me just show you a couple things here. Um, you can do a couple of multi-touch gestures with the MacBook. Oh, and look, it's Father's Day, so there's the little Father's Day thing on, on Google's website. Um, let's just go to, say, uh, Amazon. And just get something that I can scroll around on. All right, so I can use two fingers and drag the uh, drag up and down the touchpad and I'm scrolling which is really nice using your uh, boot camp control panel which is going to be down here in your taskbar area uh, you can open up your boot camp control panel there and you can go to your uh, trackpad settings and you can tell it uh, let's see, tap to click, dragging, uh, two fingers is a secondary tap, okay? So um, that will give you a right click, all right? So if I do two taps on the keyboard, and I'll demonstrate again, two taps, I get a right click. That's very cool for Windows users because this button is only a left click. This whole thing is a left click, so... If you need a right click, you can just double tap, you got it, and say so you can go in and change your display settings or whatever. Okay, so that's a couple of cool uh, multi-touch gestures that uh, that Apple gives you to use in your Windows environment on this very cool touchpad. Um, I do have a review of a Samsung laptop that I did, and I really liked that Samsung laptop. And you can go to my videos and check that one out. The thing that I ended up not liking about that Samsung and ended up taking it back to the office and letting other people use it was because the, the touchpad is really, really sensitive on that Samsung. And there were times that I would be up on the screen typing and the cursor would just go all over the place. And I would have to be very careful to type, you know, with my fingers up high, thumbs away from the touchpad so that I didn't accidentally move my cursor somewhere else on the screen. So, um... I really like Apple's touchpads for that for that ability that they're not really hypersensitive. Um, another thing that uh, that drove me crazy about it is that uh, when I was using this Opera browser here, uh, there was things that it would be doing that would uh, just make you know just random things would happen on the screen. Ta extra tabs would come up, and I'd be thinking, "What did I do?" So, uh, so far, none of that nonsense with this, uh, with this MacBook Pro running Windows. So anyway, I'm not going to bore you any further, although I appreciate you uh, watching it this far in the game. Uh, if you're looking for uh, a great way to run Windows and you're not uh, you know, a complete sold-out Mac person, get the hardware, get the MacBook Pro hardware uh, from Geeks.com or somewhere else where they've you know, reselling older MacBooks that have been taken care of, and uh, and get yourself set up with some Windows. And uh, you know, I prefer XP over Windows 7, and the reason I do is because um, you know I don't have the ridiculous. Are you sure you want to do that stuff on there? Which yeah, yeah, you can turn that off, but you know, why bother? Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, Windows 7 always seems like it's doing something. Regardless of whether you're doing something, it seems like the operating system is always doing something. So you've got that little blue circle that just keeps spinning all the time. Drives me crazy. So I'm not convinced that Windows 7 is any better than XP. I think XP is, is, uh, is the superior operating system. And uh, you take an older machine that, uh, you know, older hardware... And put Windows 7 on it, and then put Windows XP on it, and you're going to see some definite performance boosts. So, uh, just my opinion there. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. Thank you for watching, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, be sure to leave them there on 
the YouTube page.